Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and this is question number two from the October 2022 International A Level and Excel Pure Mathematics P2 paper. Um, question A here is about the remainder theorem, um, and this is a question where we're told about the curve with the equation y equals f of x, where f of x equals 2 minus k x to the power 5, and k is a constant. Given that when f of x is divided by 4x minus 5, the remainder is 243 over 32, show that k equals 2 fifths. Okay, so in this question here, there are a variety of ways we can solve it. Now, one way we can solve it, probably the, the best way to solve it, is to substitute into the expression f of x whatever makes this bracket here zero. Okay, and then what comes out of that has to be the remainder, which we know already is 243 over 32. So if you take the bracket that you have to divide by, which is 4x minus 5, and we make that equal to 0, and we find the value of x that makes it 0, which is 5 over 4, if I put 5 over 4 inside the function f, if I substitute that instead of x inside the function f, what should come out is the remainder, which is, this is 243 over 32. That's what the remainder theorem is. So by doing that, I can show that k equals 2 fifths, hopefully, by substituting instead of x, 5 over 4, and making an equation from this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 2 minus, that's going to be 5 over 4 times k, raised to the power 5 equals 243 over 32. Now, for us to solve this, what we're going to do first is we're going to take the fifth root of both sides, which gets rid of this power of 5 here. Now you take the fifth root of 243 over 32. Okay, so the fifth root, use this button over here, got a five there, and we're gonna have inside 243 divided by 32, which gives us three over two. So we say we can say that two minus five over four times k is equal to 3 over 2. And now we're going to um, find what k is. So we can say 2 minus 3 over 2 equals 5 over 4k. Now this is like 4 over 2 minus um, 3 over 2, okay, which is 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 equals 5 over 4k. And we can multiply both sides by 4. So we have 4 times a half, which is 2 equals 5k. And divide both sides by 5. So we have 2 fifths equals k. So therefore, we can say k equals 2 fifths. There we have the answer. Okay, we've shown that k equals 2 fifths. So that's one method of answering this question. Now, a lot of students like to use the method where they actually use what's given or what we have to show. And, you know, show that when we put this or we use this value of k, and we, um, you know, use the remainder theorem, um, we we end up with this remainder. And that's fine, except if you look at the mark scheme, it mentions that you must write some sort of conclusion in that, in that case. So here, if you did it that way, you'd have to say 2 minus 2 fifths, okay, x to the power 5, okay, and you would you'd use this straight away. You would say that, all right, let's use k as two-fifths and show that when you replace x with 5 over 4, just like what we did, okay, you end up, um, we'll see what we get when we put um, 5 over 4 in here. So you're going to have 2 minus two-fifths times 5 over 4, all of that raised to the power of 5. So that's 2 minus, and that's going to give you um, a half raised to the power of 5 which is 2 minus a half is uh, basically 3 over 2, because this is 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2. That's 3 over 2 raised to the power of 5. And 3 to the power of 5 is 2, 4, 3. And 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So um, that's okay, except you should mention in the end a conclusion that as, okay, uh, when f 5 over 4, okay, um, equals 2, 4, 3 over 32. When we used k equals 2 fifths, 
therefore we can say k must equal two fifths you must m mention some sort of statement in the end because you used what they already told you okay in this case you don't have to make any statement because you have shown that k equals two fifths all right um you didn't use k equals two fifths here you used k equals two fifths in your steps so this a conclusion that should be written you should write some sort of conclusion at the end um, not just leave it open-ended like that, okay? Because you actually used what they gave you. In this case, we didn't use it. We just saw that when you use the remainder theorem, okay, um, that the remainder two, is 243 over 32. When you put this into that expression, you showed that K equals two-fifths. So you, had, you found what K was. You didn't use it. But when you use something, Okay, then you have to write a little conclusion at the end when you use the thing that they told you to prove. Right, that's what's mentioned in the mark scheme, so you've got to take care of that if you use this method. A third method you could use in this case is also you could use long division, which I think would be a bit of a hassle, but you could also use um, algebraic long division, which would be a um, um, bit of a hassle actually in this case because of this is raised to the power of five. But you know, that would I think that would be very um, not very sensible to do. All right, so there we have the answer. If the question said use the remainder theorem, then you won't be able to use um, long division anyway, right? But it doesn't say that, so it's a possibility, but that would be not very sensible, I think, because raised to the power of 5 would be difficult to, to use that. All right, so there's part A completed. Now we're going to move on to part B, which is about binomial expansion. So it says find the first three terms in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of this 2 minus 2 over 5x all raised to the power 5, giving each term in its simplest form. Now, a question in, in this, written in this way, I think the easiest way for us to, to proceed is using the NCR method, okay, where we use um, the following. So, first of all, we want the coefficients, and we want to have the first three terms, all right? So, let's start with the first. You're going to have 5, 0. That's for the coefficient. And I like to use this in um, columns so that makes everything easier. So I have one row for each term. So 5, 0, 5, 1, and 5, 2. That will give you your three first three terms. Okay, that's the coefficient, the main coefficient of the terms. And then we're going to have your number term, which is 2. Then you have another bracket with the x term, which is negative 2 fifths x. Don't forget the negative sign. Negative 2 fifths x and negative 2 fifths x. Now we want ascending powers of x. So I'm going to start with this bracket with 0, then 1, and then 2. That's ascending powers of x. So therefore, for the others, I have to have the opposite, starting from the highest power, which is going to be 5, and going down, 4 and 3. All right, now I can find out what these values are. So I have 5c0, which is 1, times, and I have 2 to the power of 5, which is 32. And then I have minus 2 fifths x to the power of 0, which is 1. Anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So my first term is 32. And then I have 5c1, which is 5, times 2 to the power of 4, which is 16, times, and I have minus 2 fifths x okay so that gives us um, the fives cancel out i've got 16 times minus 2 which is minus 32 x okay so that's my second term and the third term is going to be given by 5 c2 which i think is 10 if you want to make sure take the calculator 5 c2 how you use that you say 5 shift and then you look at the ncr button the one up top of the division not the one not npr ncr 5 c2 which gives us 10, as I said. So 10 times 2 cubed, which is 8 times. Now, this is going to be a positive because you're, you're squaring a negative sign. 2 squared is 4, and 5 squared is 25. So 4 over 25, x squared. Now, what does that give us? Well, that will cancel with that. You'll have here uh, 25 divided by 5 is 5, and that's going to be a 2. Okay, 10 over 25 is 2 fifths. You have uh, 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 times 8 is 64 over 5x squared. All right, so our first three terms are going to be, so we can say that, therefore, 2 minus 
2 fifths x raised to the power 5 is equal to 32 minus 32x plus 64 over 5 times x squared. Okay, and those are the first three terms. Of course, there's more terms, but those are the first three terms of this expansion. Okay, so there's the answer um, to part B. Now, one of the things mentioned in the, mark, in the uh, examiner's report is that many people, what they did, or some people, what they did, is they thought, oh, we don't like this fraction, let's multiply the whole thing by 5 to get rid of this fraction. You can't do that. This is an expression. It's not an equation. It's like, an it's an expression. You started off with this, okay, and it became that. So you started off with this. That's not an equation. Okay, that's not an equation. That's an expression. And we're saying this is equal to all that. This is equal to all of that, right? So this is an expression that became this. You've written this in another form. You can't say let's multiply it by 5 because then you're going to have something which is 5 times what it is. What it is, we don't want to. We want to have a, the exact value of this. Is that that's exactly what it is? Okay, up to the first three terms of this expansion. So you only multiply something like by five or whatever if it was in an equation. Like this is equal to something else. Like you have, for example, x over five equals seven, and we want to get rid of the denominator. It's an equation. We multiply both sides by five to get rid of the five. You don't just look at something like this and say, oh, let's multiply by 5 to get rid of the fraction. Or you see a common factor, you think, oh, let's divide it by that factor. If it's just an expression, you can't do that. You can take it out as a factor if you want to, but you can't just divide it by that number if it's just an expression. Only when it's in the form of an equation. All right, so there's the answer to part B of this question. Okay, and we're going to use this answer in part C. Okay, so for part C, it says, using the solution to part B, which is this here. 64 over 5 is supposed to say. Using your solution to part B and making your method clear, find the gradient of C at the point where x equals 0. So this is what f of x is. f of x, after we expanded for the first three terms, is 32 minus 32x plus 64 over 5 x squared. Now we want to, they say using the solution to part B. So we want to find the gradient at the point where x equals 0. So first we've got to find the gradient function. So first we've got to differentiate this, okay? And we only need to differentiate what we have here because that's the answer to part b. We don't need to go further and find all the other terms, okay? They only want us to use the answer to part b. So we find the gradient function by differentiating what we have from part b. So 32 becomes 0, minus 32x becomes minus 32, and 64 over um, 5x squared, you multiply by the power, that becomes 128 over 5x. And that is a differential of this expression. Okay, and we want to find the gradient when x equals 0. So we got to replace x as 0. So we put 0 instead of x. We have minus 32 um, plus 128 over 5 times 0. Of course, that's going to become 0. So therefore, we can say that the gradient of f of x when x is 0 is equal to negative 32. So there's the answer to part C. Very simple. Find the gradient of C at the point where x equals 0 using the answer to part B. All right. So that's the answer to question number two. Pretty simple. Um, so that concludes this question. Question number two from the October 2022 20, paper, Pure Mathematics P2. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section over here in this area at the end of the video other questions from the topics of let's say the factor theorem will be over here and binomial expansion over here okay i won't include differentiation because it's very short this one okay so you'll have the factor theorem all questions dealing with the factor theorem and remainder theorem over here and here you'll have questions dealing with um, binomial expansion and then you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link in the, in the middle. Thank you for watching and see you soon.